Hello, my art-loving friends. There is a watercolor that has been haunting my dreams and my daydreams, and today we are going to play with it, and I'm so excited about it. The watercolor I am talking about is Schmincke's Random Gray. This is the 2022 version. It was a generous gift from one of you, thank you, and I have been absolutely dying to try it. Today we're going to paint an eagle because it is Denise Soden's August challenge for her Patreon supporters and I'm all into it. So let's paint an eagle using the random gray only and see what it looks like. I have been swatching all my watercolors on these cute little business card sized pieces of Arches cotton paper and you can see some of them aren't in the protectors yet. But since this random gray is in a 12 mil container, that means there's a lot of it and it'll last me a long time. So I might as well add the random gray to my watercolor project swatches and thought it would be a good time to test this tape that Meaden sent me. They sent me so much tape, oh my gosh. This is a lot of tape. Anyway, it is artist tape. So it actually says that it is great value masking tape from Meaden Art Supply. So I assume it's meant to be used as art tape. Although I have used masking tape, regular masking tape, many times for my art projects. This does feel more like artist tape though. It has that softness to it. So we'll tape off a little section to do this swatch for my watercolor project. Looks like we have three different sizes here. We have let me separate it so you can see. Really thick, that's one inch thick. We have three quarter inch thick and half inch thick. And the half inch size is actually one of my favorite sizes. I do like to use the thicker stuff when I wrap it around the edges of my sketchbook or my paper. So that's kind of nice as well. Or if you're putting it on a board, I like it all. I just like it all. I paint quite a bit, but I still think it's gonna take me a while to get through this much tape. It's nice to have the different selection of sizes though. Half inch is still my favorite. So let's try the half inch. I have this arches pad that I've been going through for a while and in here I have some just random sizes. Hoping this is actually, darn it's not three and a half inches. So that's okay. What we need to do is create a section that's two inches by three and a half inches because that is the size of all of my swatches. And that'll be super easy. We have this ruler that is exactly two inches wide, which is perfect. So we can put a line down here to three and a half inches. And then you don't even have to mark because the side edges have lines also. And so you can just line that up. I love this ruler. I will link it below because everyone needs one. I tell all my students that too. All right, now let's check out this meat and art tape. I'm kind of excited about this. I don't know why. I'm actually getting pretty low on my half inch tape. And that was one of my exceptions and my buying freeze was if I ran out of tape, I could buy some. But now companies just keep sending me stuff and I'm never gonna run out of anything, it seems like, which I'm grateful for. Thank you, appreciate it. <laughs> okay. I know, I stuck that to my Baohong paper. That's the paper we're gonna use for this painting, by the way. Once we see what this beautiful color looks like, I cannot wait. Ah, uh, this will be interesting. I don't usually paint with wet paint and I have not dried any out. So we'll be painting with wet paint today. That'll be, that'll be different. Now I went to stick that on my hand to get rid of some of the stickiness and it didn't even stick to my hand. Although I did just put lotion on. So that probably wasn't great. However, that probably means this is a little bit less sticky than some of the other tape I've used. Hello kitty. So the second piece I just stuck right onto the paper without even trying to remove any. I do have my sketch already here, but let's get this color going first. You know, this might be a good time also to try out this paint palette that they sent me. I also bought my own little palette during Prime Day, and this one actually might be a better one to use because I can use the lid on it for mixing space. So yes, I bought this myself. I'm not gonna put any paint in there, but I think this lid is going to be absolutely perfect for today. So we're gonna use that. Keeping one of these, I bought three of these, two for a giveaway and one for myself. And they sent me this one. We'll play with this one in another video. So what we can do is put our wet paint out on here and oh, this will be scary. I do have to put my black line there still, so there's a little bit of prep work. So I'm going to go ahead and squeeze some paint out and then maybe it'll dry out a little bit, maybe? 
before I'm ready to paint with it. <laughs> Might make it a little easier for me because boy, it's been so many years since I have willingly painted with wet paint. So that exploded a little bit, not terribly, terribly, but a little bit. I have a brush ready here and I can get that out of the cap. Looks like a pretty interesting color. Definitely a gray, duh. <laughs> Question is, is it gonna be a purple gray, a green gray, a red gray, a yellow gray? We don't know yet. I'm going to squeeze out quite a bit actually. I have a lot of binder there at the top, which is kind of a bummer. Try and find a toothpick from this drawer and mix it up. Where did I put the toothpicks? Yep, there they are. It was a little late. I squeezed out a lot of that binder already, but better late than never. Oof. Yeah, I am at least pushing some of the binder back into the mixture and then there we go. Now that I'm in there, I can twist that around and stir it up. And then that might be enough paint right there on that toothpick alone to, uh-oh, cat hair alert. I would love to keep the cats out of my studio, but they always want to be where I am and I want them with me too. It's just really inconvenient with all of the hair. <laughs> So that's kind of a bummer. I'm gonna put this toothpick right here. Maybe I can keep pulling paint off of it. Well, let's see, let's squeeze some out and see if that actually stirred it up enough. Oh yeah, I'll put some over here. We can mix it with the binder. We are all set with our black line, our watercolor palette. I just realized I usually water the swatch and I need to do that first. This big brush out here, at least I water below the black line. That way we know if the watercolor flows when it hits water, it's kind of neat. All right, now I think we're ready. Let's see what this looks like, I can't wait. Okay, let me zoom you in just a little more. Here we go. Ooh. We're about to hit water, but let me grab a little bit more paint. Okay, does not explode when it hits water. <laughs> now we know. Usually do two coats, depending on what's going on. It looks like we have quite a glare, so let me tip that for you so that you can see it without the glare. And then a little bit of salt up that right side. And we let it sit and dry. It's all dry. I thought you might wanna see how the tape comes off, so I saved that for you beautifully and it looks like it kept its edge which is the most important thing that when you're painting up to the edge of the tape that it doesn't have paint go under the edge all right came off beautifully tape is a go at least for arches paper that's always good and then i did pour a full pan of the random gray here to put into my Schmincke palette. I double checked my Schmincke palette first to make sure I had room for a full pan, otherwise I would have used a half pan. But I have a lot of room down here. I can scooch these over and put a full pan of random gray somewhere in here. So it dries with a slightly blue granulation. And the tube does say that it is granulating, just so you know, and you can see that color separation happening there, and especially in the salt. One thing that I've never fully liked about Schmincke paints is that if you have a deep mass tone, you get a sheen on it, but oh well, it is what it is. Don't fully like a shine on my watercolors, but, and I, I often use them in their mass tone, so oh well. We'll see how it goes with the eagle. We have to do some layers, I know, to get some of the darks, but if we have shine, we just have shine, and that's the way it is. Now here is my reference photo in full color, which is gorgeous. This is by Kathy Busher. It's over on Pixabay. And I brought it into Photoshop and converted it into black and white. And I'll probably use this black and white photo for my main reference the whole time because it just gives me, gives my brain a better understanding. The only thing I really got confused on when I was looking at this as far as black and whites were what color the beak might be. Cause I'm seeing, you know, just yellows and oranges here. And for my brain to translate that into black and white, it's just easier to have the computer switch it for me. So it's very much a mid-tone into lights, which is interesting because I wouldn't have fully guessed that, probably. So I started my painting out by watering the entire background, which I mercifully 
edit it out of this video for you because that takes a while. By the time you get around to the other end, you have to go back and water a couple of areas. And this Baohong paper is really thirsty, so it did take a ton of water. And you can see I'm not getting a real deep mass tone, even though I'm dipping into the biggest part of my paint pot over there. So I did have trouble continuously with this painting. It, it wasn't really a big issue, but I didn't get a big mass tone. I couldn't get things really dark. And what I'm pointing at there is the separation is actually kind of a yellow red. It's not the blue I saw on the swatch sheet. There is blue in it still, but I found that really interesting. This color is pretty darn cool. You guys, if you have a chance, if it's still out, get some because I think you'll really enjoy it if you like granulating paints. Now, this whole background took 16 minutes. Granted, I do put a couple of marks inside the eagle itself, but I'm speeding you past the rest of this, but I'll bring you back into some real-time footage here briefly. But you can see there I'm painting a few of the details in the eagle and then the eye. That's the really fun part. It was, again, hard to get a really deep, dark tone, but just layering is all that it takes. It And accepting, perhaps, that some of the parts aren't going to be as fully dark as I wanted. I think in the end though, like I'm looking at the painting finished over here right now and I love it. So just layers. Layers is what it takes with this paint. And I do need to give another good shout out to the paper Bao Hong. This is the 100% cotton version block. It is so nice. And I believe I have the artist version, not the student version. So we will find out what the student version is like later when I test that Meaden paper, if it is the same. And coming up next here, I let the chest dry and I'm putting on the second layer because I really want that chest to stand out to be nice and dark. And you can see by doing that second layer, I do get a much deeper tone. Granted, it does still dry a little bit lighter than you're seeing, but barely. And I'll show that to you in a lot more detail here at the end. So once I get this chest double painted, it's all about just kind of filling in the puzzle pieces as I often talk about in my paintings, finding that next step and getting some definition in the feathers there. And what I really love about this random gray is how light it can get and how dark it can get if you layer it. <laughs> so it's really a versatile paint and such a beautiful color. You would never think of gray as being a pretty color, but it is so pretty. And this paint says that it is non-staining, and I'm testing that right here by trying to lift that darker paint that's already dried and trying to blend it into what I'm putting in the, in the new section there. And you can see, I know that flashed back out and my paintbrush is already moving on to different areas, but you could probably see in that little clip that the paint did lift easily, and I think it's probably a combination of both the paint and the paper. You have good paint that is non-staining and you have good paper that you can scrub on without it falling to pieces and then you have a good combination. And I ended up doing that same method of scrubbing into the old dry paint to get it to blend with the new paint I was putting over it several times during the process of this painting and it worked beautifully every time. And I used my Princeton Aqua Elite size 8 round, the entire painting with the exception of the background. I just love that brush. <laughs> I picked it up a couple times, like on the chest. I'm like, I could probably use a bigger brush, <laughs> but I didn't. And look, this time I actually got a deep dark color right from the start. So I don't know if I had more wet paint, or if the paint was dry and I reactivated it better. It looks like wet paint. I just don't quite remember, but I was like, hey, I can actually get a dark color here if I really try hard, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, right from the beginning, but then it's lightening out as obviously I am getting more paint off the brush. And I kept getting interrupted and having to leave the painting and come back in just like a few minutes, so parts dry, but that's probably why I ended up having to blend in a lot because I kept having to shut the camera off, go deal with whatever. I think I had a weird dog in the yard one time. I'm like, where did you come from? I live in the middle of nowhere. Anyway, it's kind of funny, but it did get to test the blending capabilities pretty darn thoroughly. So what I wanna know, because I know a few of you have random gray and maybe not this year specifically, but if you have random gray, and maybe if you have this year specifically, what do you use it for? Also, if you have 2022's random gray and a different year, how do they differ? I think it's pretty fascinating that Schminka, I mean, what a good idea Schminka has to just blend in all their leftover pigment and then make this amazing gray. <laughs> I think it's pretty awesome. But there is one thing that confuses me because 
don't they just keep using the same pigments in all of their colors over and over again? <laughs> so it's like the random gray, I think it's probably made specifically just for that year, just as a, a marketing boon, because I can't imagine them taking like PY154 or something and just throwing it all into this mix and not using it for their yellow to be ongoing for years and years. So it's kind of an interesting thing to think about. So while you're watching the rest of this painting, I want to give you some updates. I have good news and bad news. Bad news is I've decided to shelf my coloring book for the moment because when I get back from my travels, which I'm leaving for like right away, <laughs> it's going to be the middle of September and I don't have time to do my coloring book and the advent calendar. Plus, I don't want you guys to feel like you might want to buy two things that I just want you to be able to focus on just one thing if you want it and not worry about missing out on the other thing because you already bought something else. So I am shelving it until next year. I'll still come out with a coloring book next year, hopefully in February so people can recover from the holiday season. But I'm just going to do the advent calendar this year because time, time is getting short and uh, I have a lot going on this end of summer and beginning of fall, but it's fun, all fun stuff. Just, just gotta make a decision on it. So I'm hoping to be able to put preliminary cells out for the advent calendar in November so that you guys can all receive them by December 1st. So that is the plan. It's going to be a push even so for me, but I am so excited about the project that I just can hardly contain myself. I really hope it comes together like I'm thinking it will in my mind, and I hope you guys love it so much. That's that's the biggest hope I have. I'm pretty happy with it. It's interesting using the random gray, not getting as dark as I kind of wanted it to, but it works out okay. You can see the shine. Can you see the shine in the eyes a little bit? I'm not sure, but that's really, I have shine there and then shine right here and a little bit there and there and in the nose. Everywhere there's a big bit of mass tone, so it is what it is. But there's my eagle and my entry for Denise Soden's ILC Patreon challenge. I think that's what it's called. I'll put the hashtag in the description box below, maybe on the bottom of the screen too so you can see it. You can go check it out on Instagram. I think Instagram might be the only place that she posts. Don't hold me to that. I might be wrong. but. Anyway, that is Schminka's Random Gray. Very interesting that it has more of that yellowy pink in it than I thought. Definitely the blue. It's a cool color and it'll be a fun addition to my palette. So thank you to you who gave it to me. I am so grateful to have it. Guys, I hope this was fun and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. There is a strange dog in my yard. Hang on.